I'm Jason Verbelli, and I work with Professor John Searle and Fernando Morris at Searle Magnetics Incorporated. That's in San Diego, California. Uh, I moved from the San Francisco Bay Area down to San Diego in 2013 to fully dedicate myself to these alternative perspectives and to getting this man, Professor John Searle's technology fully built and uh, applied and used in people's houses, not just talking about diagrams and uh, uh, what we can do in the future. Trying to do this stuff now and uh, doing it. So the point is uh, there are some major problems in science. I have a completely different way of looking at things. Uh, pretty fed up with the amount of money that's been spent, uh, our money, uh, on obsolete, absolute bull. Uh, and uh, it's, it, it, it's a joke, you know, people laugh, but I'm like, uh, I have a lot of humor with it, but at the same time, I am really uh, disappointed and pissed at what is going on in this world. Uh, so I just want to show a couple of things, uh, mainstream science views uh, versus some of my own perspectives based upon the brilliant work of a lot of people over the last 150 years. Um, I encourage people to visit my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash therealverbs, V-E-R-B-Z, and uh, take a look at my Facebook page, facebook.com slash verbelli, V-E-R-B-E-L-L-I. And let's start with, uh, with Einstein, a little Einy. Uh, this guy, patent clerk, um, what did he patent based upon all of his ideas of space curvature, massless particles, empty space, and all of that? What did he patent based on his ideas? Nothing. He built a two-ton refrigerator that nobody uses, but what did he build based upon his theories? Not what did people use his information, like towards the atomic bomb. What did Einstein build? Photoelectric effect, okay, but what did he build? Nothing. What did Nikola Tesla build? <laughs> Self-explanatory. Uh, you look at the difference in the perspectives of Einstein versus Tesla, you look at the achievements. Why are people listening to this bogus man? with crazy hair, Einstein. Why do people have this guy's posters on their walls? It's like, really affects me. Because it's like, uh, it's blasphemy. You have somebody who gave us the entire electrical world we're talking, we're living in, yet we're listening to a guy who did absolutely nothing with his information. As an example, we have CERN, um, this, billion dollar facility trying to figure out how the universe works. Are they going to be able to power your house with all of this? Are they going to be able to power an LED light on your keychain using this information? Never. But they can figure out how the dark matter in the universe works, right? For a fee. <laughs> yeah, right. So I wrote this paper, just put this together like five days ago, because everything that I had been studying uh, Walter Russell, John Searle, Einstein, Nikola Tesla, all of that for the past eight years and really my entire life finally popped about five days ago. And I put this so far 66 page document. It was 24 pages two days ago. Um, it's called Searle versus CERN. And what we have here is a tabletop version. This man claims that he built back in the 50s and 60s that was powering his house for 31 years until the early 80s when this electric company broke into his house, ripped out of his wall, and then took him to court for stealing their power. Uh, it was a law back in uh, uh, the UK that even if you had a gas-run generator running your house, if you weren't paying the city for their power, you're stealing their power, even if you're generating it yourself. So if you're generating 15 kilowatts with a gas generator, you're stealing 15 kilowatts from them, according to them. So they broke into his house and stole his unit and then took him to court claiming that he was stealing their power. Judge dismissed the case because they refused to bring in the device. Uh, 
beyond a reasonable doubt. So people say if he did, if you take a bunch of pictures, if you don't take pictures of something that didn't happen, and this guy was taken to court and all this stuff, well, show me his mug shots. There's no pictures that didn't happen, right? So there's a lot of information about this man that is bogus online. People have rumors and misconceptions, and I've spent the last five years ongoing conversations with Professor Searle himself, clearing this information up, posting, going onto YouTube, having arguments with people who seem to believe certain things about this guy and his claims. Now, CERN is talking about massless particles, curvatures of space. I think it's all bogus. Uh, I personally think it is easier to understand. It's less strange to talk about positive mass versus negative mass rather than only positive mass versus massless particles and how this massless particle can be more massless than this one. It's just, and there are billions of dollars for this. This is not my theories. You can look this stuff up. These are coming from the experts' mouths themselves, so it's showing their diagrams of uh, massless particles bending space. So just a logical point of view, if they say that mass bends the curvature to curve space, right? They're saying that a massless particle creates a hill in space. So they're saying that space is flat, just like a little fabric of my shirt, and then where there's mass, makes a divot. A neutron star, big divot. A black hole is a big divot. They're saying a black hole's a divot, though. They're not even saying it's a hole. They're saying it's a well in space. And at the same time, according to their model at CERN, they're saying that instead of mass going this, a massless particle does this. So wait a minute, if a, no mass at all is flat, mass, they're saying, makes a divot, how does no mass, they just said is flat, how does that make a hill? It, it's absurd. So they're saying that positive mass, or mass in general, they don't even believe in negative mass, they're saying mass generates a divot. But what's on the other side of this? A hill. If you have a divot on one side of a fabric, you have a hill on the other side of the fabric by default, right? So they're saying that mass creates a divot in space. At the same time, they're saying massless particles create a hill in space. So what is it? Is the mass of the Earth generating a curvature of space, or is a massless particle on the other side of the curvature of space pulling space to generate Earth? Does that make any sense to anybody sitting here? No, probably going over your head at first, but go through this paper. It's linked in the bottom of this video for people looking afterward. Uh, it sounds like crazy talk. To me, they sound like crazy talk. Their theories is just math on paper. It's nothing substantial. You look at these same experiments, and you can look at it from the regard of negative mass, positive mass, or you can look at it in the regard of quantum mystery bending 4D space-time because they said so for billions of dollars. It's just something's wrong here, folks. And uh, I think that I have come upon some information to really help make things tangible. There is no such thing as massless particles. There's no such thing as a fabric of space or curving space. There's no such thing as... Uh, Higgs bosons or what they're talking about. The phenomenon is real. A black hole in space, the stars when they're looking, a star is going changing direction. So they say a star must change direction because there has to be a positive, there has to be something there, a ball of something in order for it to change direction. Hmm. Okay. What about a ring of something? You can have a positive ball or what I'm saying is you can have a negative ring. Positive mass forms spheres, negative mass will form rings. The same equivalent of mass, positive mass, can't get through this, I can't push my hand through this because it's positive mass. If there's negative mass accumulated equivalent to the mass density of that positive mass, I would not be able to fit my hand through this part of air. It would be like a force field, a magical quantum force. Why? Because you're accumulating negative energy. 
What does that mean? You're accumulating electrons. What is an electron? To me, it's a negative mass in a ring, equal to what a positive mass ball would be if it were to form a physical sphere, but it's an energy ring, and instead of being a ball, it's, it's a donut. And when these scientists are measuring any part of this energy donut, they can measure all of that energy within the donut at any point. So they think that they're measuring an actual ball, a point. They're measuring it here, there's all the energy right there, it must be a ball. Measure it over here, it must be a ball. No. They have math for this. The relativity and the equivalence principle of gravity and inertia must be the same. That There's only positive mass, yet massless particles bend space, yet masslessness doesn't bend space. And it's all a quantum mystery. Pay your PhD and he'll tell you. You must have permanent head damage. That's what I'm saying. So there are four. Th they originally said space is empty. There was this guy, Paul Dirac, who said space is not empty. It's full of a sea of negative energy. What's negative energy? It's freaking negative mass. It's electrons. It's, what I'm saying is that there are, there's negative mass, positive mass. There's negative mass, positive charge, negative mass, negative charge. Positive mass, positive charge, positive mass, negative charge. Protons, antiprotons, electrons, positrons. Protons, antiprotons form spheres, will screw you up. Electrons and uh, positrons form rings, can help you out. Everything that we know, all the electricity we know, is positive polarity. And it is screwing us up. It causes resistance, causes radiation, heat, and incoherence. What is heat? According to them, it's ball electrons randomly moving, just willy-nilly. What is CERN and all these people trying to do? They pour liquid nitrogen on it in order to slow down the randomness. And they think that means order. If you have less AIDS, does that mean you're healthy? Nah. It means you have less of a disease. If you have less chaos, does that mean you have order? No. It means you have less this. So less heat is not cold. Less light is not dark. Less hate is not love. It's two sides of the coin, of the same coin. So if in order to generate coherence, you can't lower chaos. You have to generate order. It's a different side of the coin. You can't apply math of spheres and positivity to rings and negativity. You cannot apply relativity and linear moving things for spheres for nonlinear absolute rings. There's two different things. Relativity, absolutivity. Positive mass, negative mass. Positive inertia, negative inertia. Positive gravity, negative gravity. And then charges of each of those. Positive gravity, positive charge. Positive gravity, negative charge. Negative gravity, positive charge. Negative gravity, negative charge. There's like four quadrants of energy the way that I'm seeing this. It's not, okay, energy equals mass. What's energy? Einstein, what is it? It's energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. So wait a minute, you're saying light can go squared itself? Well, you said it was a limit. What the, they just don't make sense to me. So energy is not equal to mass. Energy is negative mass. Uh, matter is positive mass. They are not equal. But they have like an equivalence principle. So for this amount of mass that I can't push my hand through, there's got to be amount of negative mass that I can't push my hand through, but we would call that a force field. So if there is a bunch of positive mass collecting in space, we call that planets and stars. If there's a bunch of negative mass collecting in space, we call that black holes. Is it some ball point causing a well in the space? No, it's a ring either like a smoke ring bending in on itself, or it's like a, uh, uh, a smoke ring with a twist, like water down the drain. So it doesn't just fold in on itself, it spins as it does so. But what is that? What is the fabric of space and all of their graphs that they're saying? It's a magnetic field. 
their graphs are showing flat graphs and they don't even have the electric and magnetic fields oriented right. They have you know, ring, 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 ring with lines like almost like the spokes of a wheel. No, if the line is this way, the ring isn't this way, it's this way. This way, people. Come on. These guys not know that? Talking about black holes, white holes, green holes. These people need to learn about some pink holes first before they talk about anything else. These nerds need to get taken off the pedestal. Seriously. Like, I'm, I'm, I just see things a little bit differently. I try to add some humor and flavor to it because these guys are pocket protecting, doing nothing, wasting money, have no flavor, they have no nothing. They don't have anything except for equations that they talk to themselves about that have nothing to do with reality. Like Nikola Tesla said, today's scientists of today have developed equation after equation until they build a structure which has no relation to reality. That's what these guys do. Even think Leonardo da Vinci said, if the theory and what the government and whatever the power, people in power are telling you, if they don't match, abandon the theory. Go with what you're doing. Nikola Tesla, he, everything he built, first try, it worked. What did Einstein build? Two-ton refrigerator that nobody uses. What did Tesla build based on his perspectives of ether, which I call negative mass. Dark matter, negative mass. Casimir forces, negative freaking mass. So... These guys, they do not want to admit negative mass. They do, they, it's, they'd rather talk about massless particles bending 4D space than talk about negative mass. Why? Because it makes Star Trek true. <laughs> all of that stuff, the crazy stuff, beaming this and that, it makes it all actually tangible. That we, not thousands of years from now, if we spent the money on it that CERN is spending, and we spent our tax dollars on this type of stuff, we could have a world that would make Rod Serling drop his jaw. Twilight Zone for everybody. For real. Not like, okay, hey, let's, uh, no, this is real. This guy, John Searle, did this decades ago, claims to have built this machine already, and it was taken. We know all the stories, men in black, this and that, destroyed this, okay, claims here and there. This isn't your average claim. You have real information backed by scientific article after scientific article of you know, negative mass, Casimir force, acceleration, gravitational superconductivity, mysteries, this and that. All of that can be explained. There are no paradoxes. There are nothing that our human mind cannot grasp if we have the tools. And these people spending money, it's like the never-ending story, the nothingness going on forever. And unless you give it a name and you give it form, they're not, we're lost. And these people are going to continue on their rampage of everything until everybody's hungry and they have their streets paved with gold, spinning nothingness. Does that make sense? Like, I cannot believe people buy Einstein's crap. Literally, they buy it. They buy his posters, his books, go to school to learn it. I'm not getting any money. I'm t I'll tell you for free. I'll download my papers for free. Look at all this information for free in order to build this thing? Three mil. Is it going to go to my pocket? Hell no. Where's it going to go? To pay for top engineers to build this magnetizer as we need to do it. All known magnets are made the same sloppy process. DC, high capacitive discharge, blast a metal, saturate it, you get a magnet. This guy figured out a way to imprint a code or frequency or a wave. What it is, you're embedding little spikes of electric frequency on it. And then when you rotate it, it repeats. And then it makes a wave while it's in rotation. You have information on a record. You have information on a cylinder of a music box. What does it do? Nothing until you rotate it in relation to something else. If you have a music box, you just spin it in space. What's it going to do? Nothing. You have a music box, you spin it in relation to something else. You get the music. You get the information unravels. When you have a magnet blasted it with electricity, you just make a magnet. There's nothing in there. It's like a flat line, a dead, there's no pulse. <laughs> no life. 
his magnets, when you rotate them, they have this pulse of energy and it initiates the accumulation of negative energy, which then compresses into a more dense, dense, dense ring. And if it gets to a critical point, it forms this open coned sombrero. Higgs model shows it cone, like closed. This guy, when these magnets spin at a critical speed, by absorbing energy around it, no battery or gasoline needed, still takes power, still power around us, but it's converting all of that chaos into order. All of this becomes this. This in three dimensions becomes this in two dimensions. All of this kinetic energy anomalous like a vapor mist cloud becomes like a fire hose stream of energy out like Saturn's rings at the center. It's like dropping a rock in a pond and that, oh, that's another thing. The double slit experiment, they think that they're firing two ball electrons through these slits and then it makes waves. And they make up this fantasy about how you, there's this ball electron, there's this wave and then boop, when you look it becomes a ball. <gasps> Ooh, it's a quantum mystery. What a fool, are you kidding me? Finally, after all this information given by all these people, I finally figured this out. It's like dropping a rock in a pond, the ripples go out, right? If you were to look at it from head on, you see what? Expanding ripples. But if you were to look at it from this way, if you go through two slits, what do you see? You see their double slit experiment. They're not shooting little ball electrons. It's like they're sending out a, a sphere of influence that then... All you can see is the equator of it propagating out. There's nothing to do with ball electrons because they equate all of their equations to spheres and positive mass. So if you just admit that there is negative mass and you look at the information in a different way, all the same experiments, look at it in a different way. Look at an electron as negative mass, negative charge, forming a ring. What do they say an electron ball is around a, an atom? They say there's... A ball, they're like balls here and they circle around. No, there is the <laughs> negative, <laughs> my dogs did the same thing. There's the negative mass equivalent of what would be positive mass balls, but distributed evenly in a ring. If there are eight electrons in a shell, that means you have the energy density equal to eight electron balls but evenly distributed in a ring and it's concentric rings there's no electron balls there's no black hole balls there's no none of that no fabric of space it's magnetic fields that have a lag when they rotate at a high frequency with some very special stuff this can happen naturally in the cosmos this can happen artificially in a lab you can do it for billions of dollars reaping it for a femtosecond or you can do it for millions of dollars, reaping it at a constant on the macro scale. So I believe this guy, Professor John Searle, after having like seven, seven, eight years of ongoing conversations with this man and other people. So these aren't my ideas. I've just been able to try to articulate them finally. And this concept of negative mass and, and the rings versus the spheres just popped like five days ago after seeing that Higgs diagram, their new discovery, in relation to John Searle's diagram in print over 10 years ago. This guy's written over 100 books, not pages, over 100 books, of which I've flipped through 60 of them personally. Uh, it's just so involved and so voluminous. Universities all over the world should be studying this man's work and looking at it from this perspective. So just to top it off, through the lots of questions, obviously, please visit the, the paper and, and the page. Go through the links in the paper. Don't just look at it for face value, oh God, negative mass. Look at it in comparison to what they're talking about. Positive mass, negative mass. Positive mass, masslessness, and this is more massless than this, which bends 4D space. Jesus Christ. Help me. These people need some help, and uh, uh, got to clown them a little bit, but we got to be nice at the same time. Just 
make it fun for people, let people know that it's not something anomalous, it's something tangible. We can explain it, we can give it a shape, we can test it in the lab, and we can do some most amazing things. I guarantee you, I promise you, on my name, if this man gets his funding, he will reap the results that CERN wants to and that everybody wants to and really deep down wants to happen. But when they look at it in the totality, they just can't believe it because it's way too much. All these big boys, billions of dollars, how could some village idiot do this? How? Because he's looking at it a different way. That's it. It's just a different way of doing things. And if you allow yourself to uh, not be influenced by the rest of the hate and the trolling and all that stuff, uh, you can find some really amazing stuff. So again, my name is Jason Verbelli. I work with Professor John Searle. Uh, not everything I'm saying, obviously, is his perspectives. Or a lot of these are my own. But based upon information that I've gotten, and I hope other people can look into it and ask me lots of questions because I want to answer all of them. I want to understand this stuff a lot more and use it while I'm alive and do this because we can, uh, you know, this, lots of people said we can travel to the stars and we can do all this stuff. So, so what exactly is being built for $3 million? And a magnetizer, an ACDC magnetizer that will imprint these specific waveforms onto these magnetic rings and this big magnetic stator. So you have a big ring and a bunch of little rings. And when they roll around each other with these other materials and specific densities, then they reap the results that this guy is claiming. So the $3 million is to pay for the materials and for the 18 months full-time work with about nine to 12 professional engineers. We need two, at least two electrical engineers. Uh, we need an administrative guy, do emails and all that stuff. We need somebody in, uh, magnetics and electric software so we could map out the electric fields and all this stuff according to mainstream theory, according to new theory. Because all of the software that's currently built is all of Einstein's sphere stuff. How are you going to make a, a graphic of this without having the proper math for it first? So now you have to have a math guy write the codes for it in this relation in order to make the software, in order to make the, the thing so somebody who's electrical engineer can see what they need to do in order to, it's a very big teamwork and John Sir was only able to do this in the past because he was given millions of dollars and everything he needed for free. He walked into an electric company and everything was already set up so he used everything they had. Today we have to rebuild and repurchase everything that he used before and he has never been given the full opportunity to do that since the early 80s when he was ripped off. So all these people are like He's been doing this for years. No, he hasn't. He originally did it before and has never been given the opportunity to do it since. And that's why I'm doing this is because I want to see this guy given everything he needs to make his claims to fruition. If he is right and, he, and this is true, holy shit. This is the biggest thing that humanity can be focusing on in the next hundred years at least. I don't even want to get into what the benefits of this can do. I'll just say it can power your house for no gasoline and uh, it has other health benefits. Like, it's too fantastic to look into the benefits of negative ions and then apply that to what this can do on a massive scale. So, about $15,000. But the market will determine the price because if all other units of, let's say, this produces 15,000 watts. If all other units on the market are going for $20,000 at that price, then you sell your unit for 20,000 or maybe 18,000. So the market determines the price. To make the actual device will be maybe about five to $8,000 per unit in metals and Teflon and materials. Once that $3 million magnetizer is actually set up, then it takes literally one second to magnetize. What's the operational lifetime of the unit? <laughs> Legally, you can only say 30 years as an industrial manufacturer guarantee. Reality, longer than your life. And then your kids will worry about how long it will last from there, and then they can debate it. But uh, I just say it'll last for a long time. 
how has Hoover Dam been able to provide energy constantly for 80 years? It's an open system. Energy rains into the reservoir to replenish it as it's delivering energy. It's the only way. You cannot have overunity. You cannot have a, you have to have a proportional absorption and emission. You can't have, there's nothing, this is free energy. It's nothing to do about free manufacturing and free metal and free this and that. It costs labor, it costs money, but the energy you reap, like how much does it build a solar panel? Great. If you're living off grid with solar panels, you got free energy. Nobody's saying you're violating the first law of thermodynamics. You're just not paying for an electric bill. Free energy. It's not, okay, you're magically creating energy. No, you're just absorbing what's already there in this form and making it into this form, which it's, that's tangible, that's explainable, okay. But it's going to cost a little bit of money to initially set it up, and then once mass production is set up, people can get units just like you can get any unit. But initially, you probably can't just sell the units because uh, that first unit, let's say you sell the unit for $15,000 on the market, somebody buys it, then they sell it to China for $3 million. So wait, you sold it for $15,000, they just sold it for $3 million. So then they buy another one for 15000 They sell another one for $3 million. So Wait a minute, what does that do for your business? Where? That's the point, is that we are now establishing and already have established an international organization so that when the funding comes, we get past the R&D. When we have lots of millionaires and billionaires lined up saying, once we see this thing do what you claim, we're going to make it rain. How far along in the funding process have you gone, have you gone so far? So far, over the last five years, we've had about $1 million put in uh, from 50 different investors to build up the current infrastructure. But we still need another $3 million in order to build this over the course of about 18 months. And in addition to that, it's going to take about a million watts to power the magnetizer. So once you build the magnetizer, you have to power it. Okay, what's the going rate for a million watt battery? A million dollars. <laughs> so what budget does CERN have? What budget does these other superconducting guys have? They get millions of dollars for this type of research. This is something that NASA and CERN should be doing, but <laughs> we're doing it in this little facility that's just a lab-oriented facility with three people, and so, including myself, with a shoestring budget, and actually right now, or barely any budget. So I go to work every day, I don't get paid. I just, this has to get done. So I work on magnets, and we finally figured out these types of magnets to use now. Now, in order to make it happen, you have to have the magnetizer. How frustrating is it to try to explain the stuff to people who say, yeah, right, just do it first. Okay, just make the Higgs boson first then. Just get to, uh, let's, let's say they did go to the moon, or let's say they didn't. Just get to the moon again. Just get to space. <laughs> you know how to do it, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, yeah, just give me the team I had before, and just give me the millions of dollars of resources, and then I can just do it. It's kind of the same thing. So a lot of people are like, if he did it before, why can't he do it again? because uh, he was given millions of dollars of resources. So if you want him to do it again, there you go. So that's all we got. Uh, <laughs> a lot, lots more stuff to talk about again, but... Uh, uh, yeah, save the question for the panel. I got I tell you, there's a lot more to talk about. But uh, there you go. There you go. <laughs>